Hello friends and neighbors, we are back, and you might be wondering why we're hanging out in this little cubby hole over here in Diner's Cauldron. Well that's because someone tried to gank us. Someone made the attempt to gank us. We had been sitting AFK in this passageway here, and uh, I came back after a good AFK sit. And zoned into unrest. And when I zoned in, you can see I still got a Tashani on me. When I zoned into unrest, um, surprisingly, I saw some mobs walking back into the estate of unrest. And I had a tr I had zoned out initially because I made a run for it and I carried a train. I was like, but that was like a while ago. Did they wait until I zoned back in to head back home? You know what I'm saying? But then I found that I was not alone in the zone. And soon after discovering that, an enchanter comes up and just starts literally trying to bash me with a little dagger. I start to run for it. She tashes and roots me in the passageway to the zone. And she runs back over here for a little while. And it turns out she's charmed a death beetle. She brought the death beetle back and she's trying to melee me down. Herself and the beetle. And I'm actually in the lead. It was funny. I was in the lead against her in this effort to melee me down. <laughs> and uh, anyway, my root breaks, and I, right at a good time, I had like just rooted her, and she was casting something else on me, and um, I was able to hug the wall and get out of sight, so she couldn't root me again, and I zoned and went over there and camped out. She's kind of, she was yellow to me, so she should have beat me, and maybe she would have in the long run, but she's kind of lucky that I didn't have any living nukes up, because I felt like I was already beating her on melee. So, if I had actually had a nuke I could have used on her, she would have been in trouble. Anyway, it was kind of funny. I'm going to summon up my drinks, summon up my hammer, buff myself. I did ding 19 off camera. I was just too excited to play here in, in the estate of unrest. And so I played at a time when there was hustle and bustle around me and I didn't want to record a video. And so I did go ahead and get that ding. Today we're making a strategy video, so it's going to be a bit more informative. We're going to take a good look, even though I did it in the last video quite a bit. We're still going to take a good look at all the various possible single spawns so that we can cycle our way through here at level 19, level 18, level 20, and crank out our, our grind and discuss the strategy involved and different considerations for the zone. And I might repeat myself just a little bit, but I don't know, those of you who have been following, you might have noticed that I am creating playlists and I'm trying to put them in order from first to last so someone who discovers these videos at a later date can just watch them straight through in order. One playlist is just every video of this solo self-found adventure and then the other playlist is going to be select videos from the solo self-found adventure marking out the different solo spots and strategies for each level range so this video is going to be in both of those categories it's going to be included in the strategy video as well. So now I've got Daring. As you can see, it takes a much longer time to mend that. And we got Spirit Armor. We also got, as another buff, Endure Magic, which is great. It might help us re uh, resist some, uh, what are they, ghoul roots when we fight these ghouls, which will, yeah, it might not be necessary because we're face tanking them anyway. So I might not use that one. But if I were into the root nuke method, which I will be later when we're fighting crazed ghouls upstairs on the second floor, um, this into our magic would be quite helpful. I think I am going to drop it for now. What we do want up is invisibility versus undead for sure. Oh, we're already at full mana again. So let's get these buffs up. Boom. Boom. 
All right, we're at 375 AGI now. All right, we do want two undead nukes, just so we have a backup for if the mob's low on HP or if we're low on mana. We need to get a little extra damage in instead of running away. As you can see, Divine Aura got popped. I used it in the in the duel I had to involuntarily partake in. And I think the other spell I've been having up recently is uh, Soothe. I haven't been using it much, although there is one there is one spawn that I have decided to take a chance of using it on. And we're good to go. Now, um, let's head in so I can just show some important starting information. So this is where you approach the zone. Where you approach the estate, I should say. <laughs> you could come here much earlier and you could try to solo the yard. Problem is there's so many ads. These beetles are living, but they do not KOS. But while they don't KOS, they do assist the undead the undead. So that makes the yard a little bit of a, a little bit of trouble. So usually I would come in here in, my, in the olden days I would come in here and I would start with the patrol. We don't see it yet, but I would try to kill a patrol like right here in this living room here. Let's uh, let's wait and see if he comes by. But I've changed that strategy. But yeah, I used to kill the patrol right here. Try to be careful to kill him right here, not outside the door, not to the left, not to the right, because you can see there's ads that you can pick up pretty easily in either corner. Just kill him literally right here. And then after that, I would go for this ghoul. That's an easy single kill right there. Um, but I have, I have changed that strategy. I found a better place to kill the patrol. There he is. Got a brief glimpse of him. He'll stop. Where did he go? I just saw him walk. Oh, he walked down and walked back. There's Toklar Battlemaster. Some heavy stuff in here. I like to kill him here now. He is the only patrol, so as long as you can get him out of line of sight of anything else, you got him. So why don't we hang out here and kill the patrol real quick. Well, he could be a little while. We're getting close to full mana. This is an important spot right here. You see this little this little bar here, or whatever this is? This is a totally safe spot. That Darkbone Skeleton cannot see you. So this is where you can come and sit and have guaranteed safe med time. Alright, so the patrols arrived. Let's start this off with a melee and then let's get to nuke and let's get cooking boom as you can see i did elect to not throw up my endure magic and just face tank him and nuke it's working out decently so far we're at four percent into our level it went up to seven three percent off of them i'm leaving rusty weapons and now I can safely go over here without having to worry about invising up again and met up. Alright, so we're gonna invis up here. Boom. And let's met that back up. So now that we've got the only patrol out of the way, we can feel pretty confident that if we can find isolated targets we're not getting any ads so here I am running back through back to that front door and I'd like to start with this guy in the cubby over here because a he's a ghoul and B I can start out with a why don't we try a, a root root and nuke method just see how it goes there's the root let's move over here because I don't want to stand in front of the door it is possible to aggro some Patrolling mobs through the door. One nuke landing for max damage, no problem. Two nukes, root broke. Okay, auto attack on. So we got two free nukes out there. There he rooted us. 
but I'm okay with that. Oh, you partially resisted that one. And this should do it. There we go. Now we went up to uh, what 4%. So we're getting like 3.5 per kill. Again, remember, if you are on, uh, what's that called, green or blue, you're getting a third of that. So if I got 3.5%, you're getting, oh, you're getting two-thirds of that. So you're getting 2 point something percent. Still not bad, right? For solo EQ, and maybe it's better than that. See, I got like, it might be more than 3.5. So you might begin like 2.5. All right. Next, we're going to jog over to a room on our left here with the single spawn ghoul. Please remember to always invis up before you move around and keep an eye out for that red message that tells you when you're starting to appear. If you do that, you should have a pretty safe run of the place. The only times you'll have a problem is when you bite off more than you can chew trying to take out a mob that's maybe white or yellow. <coughs> you should be able to handle pretty much anything that's blue. Unless you get really bad luck with resists or something. So we head to the left. Remember this is the front door we entered in. We started with the patrol over there. We did this cubby here. We got 22 minute respawn timer so we're safe to met up. This first room's got two so it's not really viable for us. Unless they end up both being ghouls and we try to pass 5-1 if we run out of mobs. Now here we got a dark bone skeleton. This is blue, but this is going to be a higher end blue. It's going to be a bit of a struggle, but we're going to give it a shot. We're definitely going to met up to completely full though, because there are dark bone skeletons that are white and perhaps even yellow to us still. So this must be uh, just under as kind of blue. It could be 17 at, at the minimum, I think. 18 and even maybe 19 sometimes, not in this case, but there we go. Although I do find I have some good luck with the dark bone skeletons the last time I took one out. Let's see how this goes. He interrupted a cast there. He resisted one there. And he is messing us up, another interrupt. So now he's pretty much taking the lead, there we go. Well, this is going to be a tough fight, but it should give us nice experience. Let's see, we're at 11% at the moment. Let's see what we get to here. Now, I fought him in with my back to this cubby just to make sure I don't aggro anything else, even though there's really not much else I could aggro. I mean, there's no patrol right now, right? I am a little bit worried about that there. But just in case there's an angle for, to another room through the door, because you got to remember the doors are, it's almost as if they're not there when it comes to aggroing other mobs. Let's see, what, what kind of club did he drop here? A splintering club. Yeah, I'm really not picking up crap, because I just, I don't want to have to make a run back to a merchant that I don't have to. So again, one of the beautiful things about the 22 minute respawn is unless you're going AFK for a while, you're pretty much good to, to med up without having to invis in each of these solo locations. You don't have to go back to that safe bar or perhaps throw an invis up while you met up. You'll be coming back long before the spawn is back. We got a 5% jump on that guy, so <coughs> you'd be looking at at least 3% each time you kill one of those on green or blue. All right, you guys, we've met it up, healed up, invised up. We're gonna move on here. So we've already shown you three single, safely single spawns here. Um, be careful of this bookshelf here, because that is a door that will open up to the basement. And at the bottom of the stairs, just behind this door, there are two spawns that one of which can be a were bat. And the were bats are living, so they will see through and visit versus undead. So I just, you know, maybe I could go straight up to the bookshelf, no problem, but I tend to try to avoid it a bit. And as you can see, we've gone all the way around, and we're back to this room here that we were in before. Um, pretty much all of these rooms have multiple mobs, so they're not really viable. This room's got two. Now this cubby, back by the front door, it appears to have one, but see, you've got another right there. And both of those are too high for us to... He's a white, and this could be a white as well. It's a blue. 
So we, if we really wanted to, if we ran out of other choices, we could try to soothe this m mummy and take this dark bone. But that would be a tough, tough battle. I had to run to the zone the last time I tried to take a white um, off camera. Now this is a spot here. We've got a white. And uh, I think this is the one I was trying to take out. Maybe we will go for him again. Maybe this is a single right there. And here's another single if you fight him against the corner. Now he's he was a ghoul in my last video, but as you can see right now, he's a yellow mummy. So we're not doing yellows. Even whites are scary for us. But we want to add our numbers here to our rotation. But since these guys are white, let me go take you take you on a quick tour this is the main room definitely not doing anything in here we're going to be careful to watch that our invis doesn't drop but there are sometimes ghouls up these special little stairs here see look we got a ghoul now the carry on ghoul will kick our ass as he's red and he patrols up here but if we were really ballsy and we might be we can wait for the carry on ghoul to get patrol down and get a good distance away. And we could take this ghoul out. Here we go. We gotta do it quick. And we're watching our hits to see if that carry on ghoul is sneaking up on us. Maybe we aggroed him without realizing it. So this is another single spawn that's viable at our level, but it's in a dangerous spot. This is kind of like a emergencies only but I just felt like doing something interesting for a second boom there he's down we loot and we invis up as quick as we can come on what the heck like four five six seven fizzles there jeez all right we invised up and the patrol is down there on the hall he'll be coming back soon but we were able to take that guy out and there's a similar situation up here with this patrol and this guy in this cubby here, as well as up here on the stairs, a ghoul up here. So if we run into too much dangerous stuff downstairs, we got those options, but you're going to have to be real careful with how you pull them. Well, maybe we will. I'm going to go met up in my safe spot, and then perhaps I will consider heading back up there and working on the other side of that upstairs area. So, we're just outlining all of our potential spots with uh, single ghouls, where we can get ghouls. Because at this level, we want ghouls. We can handle them safely. Uh, we'll take a dark bone skeleton that's blue, if we have to. And in a pinch, or in a moment of, of a daredevilism, we'll try to take a white. But it, we're, not, we're not going for yellows at all, and we shouldn't need to. We shouldn't need to. We're probably going to get respawns pretty soon here anyway. Uh, the first respawn should be the... I think the first thing we took out was the patrol. Um, so after we get almost to full mana, when we have enough mana to fight but we're not full mana, we're going to go forward into the hallway just in front of us and we'll sit there and keep an eye out to see if the patrol comes by while we finish our met up. And if he does, then we know our cycle is beginning again. And voila, I've showed you, I think, all of the single spawns I'm aware of. And there's the only place where there's two mobs that are within visible distance of each other that I would even try would be near that front door. Because it's, it's an easy run from that front door to the zone line. Where I so It looks like there's just one mob in that corner cubby on to the right when you come in through that front door. But there's actually another mob in, a, in like a closet for that room. And there they can see each other and as the one in the closet is often a ghoul he wasn't this time but he was blue so we could try to soothe him i did it on my last video and then take out that white dark bone skeleton but that would be like whew, that would be tough it's better to just it's probably better that even though you got some dangerous patrols going on it's probably better to just take out the single ghouls upstairs those are often ghouls. They can be carry-on ghouls. Or, and I think the one on the, the other side, you know, the, the upstairs where we went up the winding stairs up really high, 
We killed that one ghoul on the side when the patrol left on the opposite, similar sort of tower thing going on. Sometimes there's a named ghoul that will spawn there that we can't take out. But if we're running out of single spawns before I would try splitting anything, I would be hitting those those spots up. I would be waiting till after the patrol left. But I don't think we're going to need to do that. I think we're good. I think our hallway patrol should be coming pretty soon here. In fact, we got 80 mana. That's Let's wait till 85. We'll be ready at 85. Now, the reason I don't just go sit over there now is because you never know when Invis will drop. It could drop at any time. I've gotten really lucky. It has not dropped prematurely yet at all for me, which is great. But it can. It definitely can. Now I feel like we're good. We're going to hang out here while we mid up the rest of the way to 100 and see if the patrols back up. And if we don't see him by the time we get to 100, we'll go look for him. And if we still don't see him, then we'll consider our options where else we can get another single spawn. But I feel like 22 minutes, how many did we kill? We killed this guy, we killed the guy in the cubby, then we killed the guy in that room, then we went upstairs. We killed about four spawns. I feel like we got to be getting close to that respawn mark, right? Then again, oh yep, here it is. Here's the patrol. So patrol's coming around. And we're more than ready for it now. If we could back up here, I, I'm pretty sure we couldn't aggro. If we're here, I wonder if we could pull off a... Let's try a root, see if we aggro. No aggro. There we go. We could do some root nuking. Let's see how lucky we get. There, the root held through that one. Hell through that one. One, two, three. Wow. Looks like we're not even going to take a hit on this one. Four. That's still too much HP, I think, for a ward versus undead to finish him off. So we're just going to hit him with another nuke and voila. Untouched kill right there. Very nice. Now, as you see, we're not getting much loot, so we're not going to have to worry about being encumbered until, except from coins. Which we could begin. Yeah, we're at 52 out of 65. I'm probably gonna destroy copper and maybe even silver, just cause uh, I don't want to try to. I don't want to have to at this low level. I don't want to have to try to go vendor. I'd rather get a higher level. Anyways, let's med back up and resume our cycle. All right, we're just about ready to go here. We're gonna head back over to that other cubby by the front door. Oh, this is probably the wrong way to go. I should have just gone straight. Yep, just go straight down. There we go. Now we got a dark bone skeleton here. White. Oof. But I'm tempted to give it a try because we get to start out with a... We can start out with a root from a distance. And I like that. We're going to definitely get full mana here. Now I haven't mentioned it much because it's not going to apply at the spawns we're hitting up now. But there is a couple places where where bats can spawn, and they're mostly near the fireplace spawns. You won't be going there at all at this level, so I will talk about them more when we are ready to do fireplace. Now we are a bit... He is white, so I want to get some more distance while I cast this root. So as long as you're doing the spawns that I've discussed here, you should be fine. You don't have to worry about any where bats except near that bookshelf. And even then, I don't think you really have to worry about it. I think I'm just being a little extra cautious. Lucky. I mean, he did partially resist both those nukes, but at least they didn't break root. He partially resisted that one, too. Oof. This is not good, because at this rate, we're not going to have enough mana to nuke him down. There's a fizzle to add to our mana woes. There's a full nuke. Okay, we just need a couple more good full nukes. And look at this root holding beautifully. And it's probably going to break any second now. Boom. Wow. We used absolutely all of our mana, but Root held the whole way as well. That's that's very nice. I'm guessing our buffs are going to drop soon. So I'm probably in for a good deal of a, a med session here. But um, yeah, it's unfortunate we have full HP. <laughs> you know, oh, well, first world problem. I just, sometimes I love to 
utilize that regen time to the max, but we want to be safe. Not worry about that. But yeah, um, if you go upstairs, both of the possible whereabout locations are off of the of the fireplace. There's three of them. There's three places whereabouts could could be. One place that a whereabout is guaranteed, but they should be no problem for you. But I, since I'm talking about it, I just want to show. So up here in this room here, there can be whereabouts. And there can be whereabouts inside this room where the mag arch magis spawns. And there's a guaranteed whereabout patrol that goes by this door right there. But again, these are all fireplace, fireplace locations. Nothing you need to worry about at all. Alright, I'm going to med up here. Probably going to have to buff up again soon. Alright, after a long med break with uh, rebuffing and with these new level 19 buffs, they take a solid chunk of like 35% mana. So, well, good thing they last a bit longer too, though. We're pretty much ready to go. Let me just get to like 97, 99. There we go, 98. Let's just get one more tick to 100. Okay, now we remember we can hit up this room. No, this room has two. If we really wanted to, we could try to soothe the ghoul and take the dark bone. Or calm. It might be close enough that we might want to use calm. But the level variance is still too low for me to feel very confident on that. So let's just go with this guy. Now again, this bookshelf here is one of the only places where I, one of the f other few places where you might end up running into a were bat or being close enough to get him to see through your invis. But um, I don't know if they can see through that wall when it's closed. But and there's no reason to go up against it. So just stay away from the bookshelf. That's my advice. And here we go. We start out with a miss and take a double hit of tens. Tens not so bad. There we go. We land a full nuke and a max hit. And we got an interrupted on that nuke. But not on that one, but I, it only landed for 15 damage. Unfortunately, he resisted a good portion of it. And then interrupted again. So you see, things can go bad. Things can go bad against these guys. Boom. There we go. There's a max hit. Boom. There's a flat out resist. Wow. So this guy's been resisting us pretty good. That's another reason to avoid taking out whites. Because the RNG can make literally just screw you over with the whites. With the blues, you're pretty much safe. The RNG can go pretty bad and you can still pull it off. But with the whites, you're not. <laughs> and let's. I'm kind of glad we leveled up our one hand blunt. Let's just take a look at how much damage we got from it 7, 2, that's 9, 8, 17, 11. 28 plus 2, 30, 38, 41, 45, 55, 57. So we got 57 points of damage from our melee. That's almost an entire nuke, pretty much. So melee is a... Uh, I'm glad that I leveled it up on those sisters before I came here, and I recommend you do the same. Um... You might want to, if you ha if I had my fine steel uh, staff, might have been better. But then again, the extra AC I would lose, the shield's doing me an extra 10 AC, might have made me take some bigger hits of damage. So I really would have to experiment to know. The real reason I went to the shield again is because of the magic resist. Right now we're not worrying about it. We're happy to face tank the ghouls. But um, soon, not so soon, but eventually, we're going to be taking out festering hags. So to do that, we're going to need a bit more magic resist. We did get endure magic. That'll get us 20. We have 25 base, and that's plus 10 from the shield, so it puts us at 55. We're going to get a bloodstained mantle, I think, somewhere in the fireplace. Um, one of the mobs in the fireplace will drop a bloodstained mantle for us. I think it might be the barkeep. That might be a difficult, difficult one to get because there's often a festering hag patrolling the, st the stairway outside the barkeep, and the barkeep room itself has got a ton of mobs in there. 
So we're going to have to do some very tricky pulling to get that barkeep out, but I think we can do it. And once we get that, we'll get another 10, so we'll be up to 65 magic resistance. That's pretty good. I really wish I had found those split paw gloves that do another 5. That would have put us to 70. And uh, we might consider in a few a few levels b before we do the hags, going back to Crushbone and getting the ringmail vest that can drop off of Emperor Crush back there for another 8. So let's just say we only get that ringmail vest and the bloodstained mantle. We don't get those gloves. That's an extra 18. So that'll put us up to 55, 65, 73 ish magic resistance. Not bad. It will help a lot against the hags. They're nuking hard. It will also help against the ghouls. So that, because these ghouls we can face tank. But once we go upstairs, the carry on ghouls. The crazed ghouls, they're too much for us. They will, they're not face tankable. We need to root nuke those guys. At least the majority of it. We could face tank a little, but not like these guys where we're face tanking them solid for a while. No, no. They'll, they'll rip us apart too much. So we want to have that magic resistance so that they won't be able to root us. Okay, I'm trying to remember if we had any more single spawns that we were taking out on this first floor. I don't think we did. But our success... Oof, do we dare a white? Do we dare a white? Or do we go... Do we go back and see... Let's go back up in main room here. I wonder if we could break this room. We gotta stay away from this carry-on ghoul to do so. But if we landed just two, two soothes, we could pull a dark bone scout. No, we can't pull him out because he'll go by other rooms. So I don't think we're gonna be able to break main room unless we used calm because calm lasts three minutes. All right, so we got the carry-on ghoul here right now. We're going to wait for him to patrol away, and we're keeping a sharp eye out to see if we're, our invis versus undead starts to drop. And we're sitting right now. You can't see it, but we're sitting. Even though we got full mana, might as well let her get maximum HP regen. Come on, buddy. There's nothing to see here. It's almost like he senses my presence. He's like, something's amiss here. Hmm, must be the wind. And off he goes. Look at the textures on this, guys. It's pretty cool. I like this texture pack, especially in Unrest. It looks makes Unrest look really, really neat. All right, we want to make sure he's out of the way. I think that's out of the way. And we don't want to wait much longer than that because we got to make sure we take this ghoul down and invis up again before he comes back. I think we got kind of plenty of time but short enough amount of time that you want to just crank it out as fast as you can. Because he will ruin our day, especially with a root. And oh, trust me, he will root, just like this guy just did. Come on. Oh, jeez. This is getting dangerously long. There, we got a rawhide belt. We're not even going to heal up or anything. We're just going to invis up. There we go. We'll sit down while the root wears off, and then we'll get out of here. All right, Divine Aura just popped back up for us. All right, there goes the root, and there he, he comes. So you see, it, is, it can get a little bit, can get a little close, a little hairy. A little hairy. And I think that's a full rotation, if I'm not mistaken. I think from there, last time we just went back here, we met up here, and we found that the uh, the patrol was back up. So we did two rotations today, you guys. And I think that's a good that's a good amount. Uh, I'm gonna call it. I kind of woke up at like 4 a.m. and I. And I felt like making a video, even though I probably shouldn't. 
that's the only reason I'm on right now and I, I don't want to make it too long I think I'm gonna log off here I think I this is a perfect amount for the strategy video two full cycles of maximum engagement soloing through unrest there are more spawns that I would usually do but unfortunately we got some higher level mobs that in some of those spots um, but they could have been ghouls um, go and check all of the single spawn points out I hope you remembered where they are maybe uh, just a quick revisit here while we're invisible you got this guy here that once you kill him this guy is a single this guy is a single and we're gonna be ripping all these down later there's only three in this room so that's a potential well, when we're higher we will be lolling and breaking that room pulling it I think I just saw our patrol there's the patrol again okay now you see this hallway here this one goes all the way down to the front door you've got a single in here over in that cubby there you've got a single over here now uh, if you manage to lull that guy you got a single here and then another one here and that should be enough to keep you pretty busy but if not you saw where we went upstairs at the top of those towers but you got to make sure you wait for the patrol to come up and then leave before you work on those and I believe that should do it you guys all right catch you next time best of luck uh oh okay there we go best of luck